The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendale, your host for Persisted Learning Groups podcast. Thanks for spending some time with us today. In this podcast episode, we feature an interview with Sarah, who is a biology SI leader for the Peer Study Group program at Housatonic Community College in Connecticut. She shares some of the learning activities that were used during her face-to-face and online SI session. Sarah finishes the interview by sharing what she's learned personally and professionally from her experiences in the program and the friendships that she has formed with the SI participants and the other SI leaders. Well, let's listen in on our conversation. Sarah, introduce yourself and tell us what are you doing at the institution academically and what do you think you're going to pursue for a future vocation? Hi, um, my name is Sarah. I am actually studying to become a medical assistant at Housatonic right now. I would love to become a medical assistant, preferably work in a health administrative field after I graduate. So I'm almost done. I have a couple more classes left, so I'm expected to graduate next year in the spring. What kinds of experiences led you into that career path? Um, so I, I know I've changed my major a couple times. I was that student who struggled to find, you know, my perfect career path. And um, every single major I've had in the past just didn't work out for me. But I've worked in the medical field before. I worked at a pharmacy and I love helping people out. So I have customer service skills. And not only that, but I'm really good at working with computers. So I think that's what pretty much led me into this particular field. Well, I always think it's an interesting story to hear on people's career paths. Glad that you got to where you wanted to be at. Well, why did you decide to become a peer study group leader while you were on this path? I am a supplemental instruction leader for the subject biology. And I know biology is a lab and lecture class at Houstonic. So a lot of the times it can be very overwhelming because there's a lot of assignments that get assigned and um, we have very long lab hours, both in person and remotely. So now I know I've been there. I've taken biology before and it's one of my strong suits. So I wanted to really help other students out on how to achieve their goals and get good grades and you know not only that but develop really good study habits that could that they could you know use for other classes also well something that i heard you say was that you could identify with what students were going through because you know what it's like to struggle through a course and and succeed yes absolutely Well, what we turn to, what are a couple of the learning strategies that you use during your study group sessions that seem to help other students to learn the material? So growing up, I've always been a visual learner, and I've learned that through all the students that I've helped out for biology. They're also very visual learners, and I know sometimes it can be a little bit hard now that we're all studying and working remotely. But I like to, you know, I like to make interactive PowerPoints and games. And not only that, but there's a lot of terms that you have to remember for biology. And one method that I really like that definitely helped me when I was studying for this class was making like mnemonic and like, you know, phrases that go along with terms, important terms that you have to remember for tests. So I really like those methods. Do you ever use visual organizers to help make connections among the ideas? So I know I use a website called Kahoot, which is very interactive and I can share links so I can make, you know, like a like a mock quiz almost. And then I can send it out to, you know, my students that I'm helping out and they could use that to help them out with studying for tests and quizzes. This, and it really does help them out because they know what to expect on the actual test and they'll be, you know, more mentally prepared on that. I'm, it's still a trial and run, so I'm still figuring out how to be more interactive while, you know, working remotely, but that's what I've been doing so far. Well, I've got to say, this is extraordinary times uh, to go to school, and it's even more extraordinary to run study group sessions during these kinds of times. So, uh, well done. 
Well, based on your experience as a study group leader, we've talked about what is it you're doing for the students in your sessions. Well, how are you developing personally and what kinds of vocational skills do you think that you're developing as a result? That is a good question, actually. Well, I know aside from helping students out, you can also tend to make friends through these study group sessions. And I know making friends is very hard during this time because you're not in person. (laughs) You're at home staring at a laptop screen. Um, You know, there are some people who are not very good at making friends. So I think, you know, being able to come into these like study group sessions or workshops, like we like to call them, really can help that out. And, you know, the more the merrier. Um, Sometimes there will only be one person in the workshop, which is totally fine. It's better than no one. And other times there could be like maybe five or six people and we can all form, you know, a connection. No, that's excellent. Uh, I've, I've heard other study group leaders talk about it. Um, that sometimes they're kind of shy and developing relationships and friendships with others. That's really kind of a remarkable experience from them. Can you think of any vocational skills that you may be developing as a result? Is it like communication skills, leader skills, anything like that, that you think that you're developing as a result? Oh, I think so. Yeah, um, definitely leader skills. And, um, you know, personally, um, I was I used to be terribly shy. I used to be so terribly shy. I couldn't talk to anyone. But being able, you know, being a supplement SI leader, I should say, um, really helped me develop better communication skills and um, other people. And when I share that other students can relate to me, which is like, honestly, amazing, because that means they're comfortable with talking to me. One of the biggest outcomes that come from being an SI leader is developing confidence. And confidence will not only carry forward in personal life, it'll show up in your work skills in all kinds of places. So thanks for our conversation today and best wishes for the future for you, Sarah. No problem. 